Get in the water, you can. Okay, take them off, buddy. Hello, guys. World Travel Nerd. Give you guys a quick shout out and kind of a transition between the uh, parts of the video. Coming up here in just a second will be part two of the Anger Girlfriend Barry interview with Shana Dustin at Battleground Comics in Dalton, Georgia. I uh, will go into a little more of the shop's history in the second part, as well as hear some more stories the guys have to say. Just wanted to give you guys kind of a quick transition between those scenes, as well as say thank you for y'all's support. Uh, let me know what y'all think so far on how the channel's progressing. I'm working on editing, learning new things. We got a long ways to go, but we're getting there slowly. We're working on it. Let me know what y'all think, as well as future content, future things y'all would like to see, as well as any feedback or... Uh, any help y'all can give as far as uh, editing tricks, uh, things to check out. But uh, let us know how we're doing. Uh, let us know what you guys like to see. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in a second. All right. So back, but uh, okay. So how the story, how I got it, and on the backboard, Titan had it on the backboard, and I'm over here counting money because I set up at this show, and I walk over there, and I'm like, that's an uh, that's, uh, that's an ASM 14. I said, dude, what's that all? And we looked at it, looked through every page, and the dude, it's a solid copy. And, uh, she doodled on every page but the ad pages. She left the ad pages just white and beautiful. Huh. So they should have put a note on there about that. Ad page is beautiful. Rest of the book, not so. But, uh, uh, not so much. But, uh, I walk over there, and I'm looking at it, and I was like, well, God, I can't remember the guy's name, but I was like, and I back that this is 1994. I'm gonna say 94. I'm gonna solid call it. It's between 92 and 95, but dude, I'm I'm gonna call it 94. So for this story, it's 94. So uh, it's 1994 ish, and um, I was like, well, Mike, what you want for it? It was Mike, Mike, Mike. I said, Mike, what do you want for the book? And he's like, forty dollars. I just rolled it out and bought it, and everybody's like, wait a minute now. Everybody thought they wanted like hundreds of dollars for it. No, I, I won't lie to you. I paid 40 bucks for it. But now, back then, $40 was a lot of money. Minimum wage was like three seventy five. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, still, though, I, I made good at the show. And uh, I think I sold like a Lady Death number one or Evil Ernie Eternity or something. I sold, and the Razor was smoking hot because every heart sold was there. And I had multiple copies of everything he'd ever done. Razor Angel number two was the first appearance that she, and that book was on fire. And I, I bought them out of the Diamond Fall Fling. They had them for 10 cents a piece. And I was just getting stacks of them. So I had short boxes full of them. So I was just selling the crap out of that. So I made really wet with that. Particularly so. And the book was on fire. So I bet I sold 30, 40 copies of it at 75, 100 bucks a, a, a pop. <laughs> But uh, well, uh, yeah. Well, speaking of shows, uh, these guys actually host local comic cons. They do uh, uh, Cartersville Comic Con every year. And, Calhoun. Uh, Calhoun. Calhoun yeah. this was, last year was y'all's first year doing that. Yes, mm -hmm. it was. And we have a partner in that, Rocky Spurlock. He does Farley Con. Shout out, Rocky. And this is we're we're doing this live from the Battlegrounds Games and Comics in Dalton, Georgia. Come check us out. I think he's already said that, but a shameless plug. But uh, no, there's no but, shameless plug. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, uh, there's been no local conventions in our area for quite a while, and they were brought going conventions with to us, and uh, they brought some great conventions to our local area. And of course, COVID's uh, made an impact to everyone in the community this year, uh, between convention owners, cosplay groups. I mean, a little bit of everything. But uh, these guys have done an amazing job bringing some amazing things to the community and to the collecting community. Uh, brought a lot of great groups of people together. Um, uh, I've only actually been able to make it to one of their shows so far. Every time they have it, they seem to schedule, somehow manage to schedule for weekends that I work. But uh, the ones I've been to, the videos and pictures I've seen of them, they're always amazing. Have great turnouts. Uh, there's a there's a great community of collectors in this area. 
Uh, I gotta say, COVID hurt us this year. This is our fifth year. Yeah. It's our anniversary year, and we were gonna do it up. We we had some big guests, big guests, but you ain't gonna get no guests in, in this. And uh, I have health issues, so I am gonna go ahead and respect everybody that's that's not going anywhere, wearing masks and stuff like that. I can't wear a mask. I can't breathe through it. I've got, I have a bronchial issue. I ain't gonna get into all that. I'm like, oh, I'm old and got this, but it's, I can't pull that. I, you know, I, I can't breathe that. You know, I can't breathe my own air. And I mean, it's already poison I'm spitting yeah. out. So I slapped the Gary Gygax, I beat up the dark one, I knocked Billy D. Williams three feet across the room. I told how much, I, I told a comic book creator how much I loathed Brian Michael Bendis. Just this stuff, everything the man writes and does is poison. And he had, uh, like a, two days later, the comic book creator that I had talked to that about writes a blog about how big of an inspiration Brian Michael Bendis was to him. He's like his idol and his, his, his mentor. mentor and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you let me sit there and talk all that crap about him. But I'm about four times his size, so he pro he knows how to pick his battles. But uh, it was funny. But, God, there's been so many things happen. I have, you would not believe the things that I have seen walk by. I'm sure. At what, you know, uh, but, but we will be at a show, I would say, yeah. probably one Daddy's of the best. Glasses. One of the, the coolest uh, things was when we did Huntsville this year was actually getting the time because the crowd was off, you know, a yeah. little bit uh, from, I mean, still a good crowd, yeah. but for the Huntsville show, it was it was down a little bit. Yeah. But, um, you know, getting to hang out and talk to uh, Chris Claremont for a while. That was yeah, a yeah, man. Okay, so we went over there at the very last hour. This is Saturday, right? And yeah. we, we ain't had nothing to eat today. And, we're, and we got a bunch of books. I mean, he signed. I mean, it was $10 a piece. But yeah, I don't care Chris Claremont. Yeah. But we picked. We was like, wait a minute. We got a Wolverine number one sign, not the, not the Frank Miller. We got an actual Wolverine, Wolverine one. one. The, 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 yeah, the... the the, uh, which he wrote the Frank Miller too, but but uh, this uh, it's the patch one, the the ongoing series. The first one, but everybody's got that book. But this is a nine eight. This would be beautiful. It's about the prettiest copy you'll ever see. But anyway, we got him to sign that and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, I, I started talking to him. Somebody asked Dustin, "Hey, because we had our table and Clint's like our, our brother-in-law was over there. Hey, how much is this?" So Dustin had to go back to the table. But, Man, I thought that, that I was never going to get back. Man, he, he talked to me. He was counting money and packing his suitcase and packing everything up, and he talked to me. We were still walking. He was walking out the door to leave, 
And I'm like, Dustin is probably going to bait me senseless because, you know, I, I need to be able to pack it up. The show wasn't over. It's a three-day show. Yeah. Two-day, but you could load it on Friday. But, I mean, this is really the first day of the show, and we did really well. And we were, we, you know, was going out to a nice dinner and everything. And I'm like, I'm sitting here, and Chris Cameron talked to me all the way out the door. He is amazing. I mean, that was my childhood. Yeah. Uncanny X Men was my childhood. Likewise. Because uh, yeah. the Teen well, Titans. Started. Yeah. The Teen Titans and the X Men. And I remember when nobody knew who the heck Wolverine was. The only exposure that, that we had to comic books was, was what was the TV and movies. And there wasn't many except for Superman and Batman. Now, yeah. I wish that everybody in, in the audience could have been alive in 1989 when Tim Burton's Batman hit because you couldn't even go to the gas station without people being set up at the gas station with Batman merchandise. Wow. It was the year of the bat. It, everything was Batman. There was Batman tags, that Batman's, Batman, that, like everybody. a stuffed Batman with the suction cups yeah. that you put in the window of your car. <clears throat> yeah, I wish I still had those because of, those were probably worth some money I'm because sure. they, were, they were more based on the Adam West Batman and everybody was kind of expecting the Adam West Batman when they went into Tim Burton's and they were like, "Whoa, oh, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't get back to George Clooney." Right. Oh God, bad nipples. <laughs> bad nipples. What? But don't tell me that the back credit card, all that, was not just complete reminiscent of yeah, Adam West Batman. Man, whether it was what, meant to or not, what, uh, Schumacher's was Adam West Batman dude, revitalized. Do you, you know? That Schumacher still to this day apologizes for that. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, well, he made the ultimate apology for it about a month ago when he died. <laughs> I'm George. But, uh, was, yeah, Joel, Joel Schumacher. Because George yeah. Clooney, the one, yeah, George Clooney said, I will never play Batman again as long as Joel Schumacher is alive. And the day that Joel Schumacher died, he said he would audition for Batman Beyond Bruce Wayne. <laughs> If Don't West tell me that man alive, didn't hold a grudge. <laughs> yeah. If West was still alive, but Michael Keaton would be a good one. But what I want, what I'm dreaming for, is uh, 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 Negan, uh, uh, The Walking Dead. It, uh, no, uh, what's his name? The, the guy that plays Negan. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? Uh, God, I hate getting old. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Well, it was on Tim Burton. Yeah. Walking Dead's film. Jeffrey Dean Morgan has got to be uh, Tom Swain, Swain Batman. He's got to be Tom Swain. I can definitely see that. He'd be a great film. Yeah, he would. Well, he already played Thomas Wayne in in uh, uh, the uh, uh, what in. The uh, Justice League. Just, Justice League. I mean, it was Justice no, League. Batman or, versus Superman. Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So him and the uh, oh, yeah. and the the girl that plays Maggie was Martha Wayne. So that's two Walking Dead stars playing uh, Thomas and Martha Wayne. In fact, I mean, yeah. and you know she would be the Joker. So Maggie would be the Joker. That I gotta see. I that's worth the price of admission or. I don't know if we'll ever pay admission to see a movie again. I don't know if we'll ever be able to go, go to the movies again. It's going to be a while, probably. Yeah. But, uh, it's going, man. uh, he's one of the owners of Battleground as well. If you, oh. you want, yeah. He, uh, but, uh, actually, yeah. remember these guys about, about y'all shop. You want to sit down for a second and say anything about it? Come on, Jason. Go sure. on, man. Yeah. Love that shirt. Y'all, this, <laughs> this is Jason Mathis. Yeah, he is the owner of the Battlegrounds. We, we, we stole his shop to, to do this YouTube video for our buddy. But, uh, get that back on that because this is a child friendly shop. It's not that it's offensive or anything, but it's supposed to say go to Battlegrounds. It's supposed to say go to Battlegrounds on it, but I'm, I'm assuming somebody did the Battlegrounds went away. Yeah, put that one on there. Uh, we kind of finished up most of the interview questions. Uh, uh, you want to tell anything about the shop, uh, about the history of it, uh, future plans, uh, just talking about your time in the community and collecting the stuff, whatever you want to talk about. For I love that shirt, by the way. Thanks. I so love that. I don't know, man. I, to me, the, I guess the coolest thing is going from the flea market to uh, where we are now.
Oh wow! And, uh, was you at was you at Red Barn or Big Okay. If you yeah. didn't start out at a flea market, then you're not really in this business. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just saying, if you didn't come from the flea market, to to I mean, everybody's doing it. We started at Collinsville, 41. I mean, we went all over with that. You start out at the flea market. That's where you start. Yeah. yeah. That's where a lot of places like this seem to start. That's the flea market. Um, I thought that was some of the other stores around here. They started at the flea market too. Uh, well, it's definitely come a long way. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I absolutely love the, love the setup here. Um, hey, some of the shops around here need to go back to the flea market. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, that. I, yeah. I just told them earlier, I said, I won't say your names. I said, you walk around the shop here and look at just about anything. Retro games, comics, figures, whatever. Uh, you walk in most of their shops anywhere within a 50 mile radius of here, y'all's prices would be good by Really? That's good to hear. I won't I say, guess I won't say might that. might not be good to hear. That's, yeah, it depends. <laughs> well, well, too many people uh, who want to run a shop now don't even look at sold listings on eBay. They look yeah. at asking listings on eBay. Well, we look at sold because, I mean, that's yeah, reflective yeah, of the actual yeah. price. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's the awesome um, problem with flea market these days. You go to the flea market now, everybody thinks. Y'all just brought up a like very a valid point. There, there's not who it goes by Overstreet prices anymore. Nobody, not even us. Now, if we go to look at a collection, oh yes, we're taking it Overstreet, and we'll show them the price. Yes, but but used to there were apps like uh, now Go Collect I think still around, but uh, uh what's the one? Go uh, Collect uh, There there was a Zach Capel. Man, I look, because that's basically the overstreet of the internet. I could just, boom, jump on Zap Kapow, and it shows you all the covers, everything. And it's gone. It, it's, it is gone, and I miss it. I paid for it. I, I miss it. But uh, now, it's, eBay's it. I used to hate dealing with eBay, but I'm going to tell you something. COVID made everybody an eBay seller. If you're in this business right now, you're an eBay seller. I'm just saying that. Yeah, it's either, sure. either that or go hungry. But uh, the battlegrounds will be here for the next century. We hope. We hope that it gets passed along. But uh, it's here. It's, it, it, it'll be here. This is our eighth year. So I definitely don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. This place. Anytime, any business that makes it past the first three years, you got it. You got it. You got it. You're, you, you got it. After business model, you do. Yep. 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 You, know, you, you know what works and what doesn't work by that. Thank you.